Hey everybody, so today we are inside the house and we are going to make some fermented hot sauce. So, I've already got everything ready. At least I think I got everything ready. Um, and we're going to be, I'll bring it up here to you. We're going to be using this book. It's in my Amazon storefront if you uh, want to check it out or purchase it. But this book is amazing. The sauce that we're going to make today is this honey jalapeno sauce. Um, it's really, really, really good. I don't use jalapenos though. I use, um, like I already have some started over here. I use, uh, it's a cayenne type pepper, but today I'm going to use this orange pepper right here. Um, really, really hot pepper there. And so, uh, if you're, if you're going to try to make this, make sure that you keep your, you know, you wash your hands after you, after you touch those, but I already have them chopped up. Like I, like I like them. I've cut out all of the, you know, bad spots and cut the stem off of them. I don't take the seeds out of them. I like the seeds uh, in my ferment and I don't take the seeds out of them after the ferment either. I just blend them all up in the Vitamix. Um, so first thing is the ingredients. We need, it says eight ounces of jalapenos. Um, I don't know how, I don't ever measure them. So, but they're, those are my peppers today. Two cloves of garlic. I use uh, elephant garlic because that's what I grow here. So I just use one clove of that. It's probably too much, so I'll cut that in half. Um, then we got two and a half cups of non-chlorinated water. Two, tea, uh, two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, half, I mean, a quarter of a cup of honey. A quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar. And then we'll save the brine from the ferment. We need a quarter of a cup of that. And then we need one eighth of a teaspoon of cumin seed. And I don't have the cumin seed, but I have the powder. So I just, I just use that. And that is it. So, I mean, that's a pretty easy recipe. Um, what we're going to do first is I'm going to make a ferment and then I'll set that aside. And then the one that I already had fermented, we'll go ahead and make that into hot sauce. I got my bottles ready. I got my, my funnel over there. Um, I got every, this is the jar that the new ferment will go into. And I think I got everything ready over here. So let's get started. Um, so I need to put my peppers and my garlic inside this sterile, this, this is sterile jar. It's been sterilized and I'll basically just drop my peppers down in there. And this just happened to be all of this type of pepper that I harvested. So I'm not concerned about if it goes all the way up to the top and all that stuff. This sauce will be so hot that it doesn't matter um, how much, how many peppers I put in there. All right, so the peppers are in there and now I gotta put the garlic in there. And so with my garlic, I'll just cut it in half right there, cut off that rough edge. And then I'll give it a few, a few chops here, nothing major. And I'll toss those down in there. Some people like to put them all the way at the bottom. I don't really care, but I will push those down just a little bit. But they will do their job right there. And then after that, I need to make the brine. That's where it comes with my water. And let's see, let's see, and my salt. I've already measured the salt out, so I'll go ahead and get that in there. Get that. Oops, I don't want to spill it. Let me get something to stir that up with. All right, so we got that mixed up, and I, I like these little weights. It's a glass weight, 
got got pretty good uh, weight to it, and that goes down in here inside the jar. So that's going to keep all my peppers from floating up to the top. I may have one or two. If I ended up if I end up having peppers uh, that float up to the top, I'll just take them out. I'm not I'm not overly concerned about that. Um, and then I need to pour this in here with leaving at least one inch of uh, headspace. All right, I like to go slow, and there we go. That's about right, right there. All right. So as you see, there's a little bit left over. That's fine. If I had uh, filled this up even more with peppers, I would have more of this left over. <clears throat> and I like to use these little fermenting tops. I don't know what they're called. Uh, I might have a yeah. I got a. They're called uh, pickle pipes. I think I got these off of Amazon. I'll try to leave a link below to these. But they're really, really cool. You don't have to. You don't have to burp your your jar. You can you can pretty much leave it and forget about it. To be honest with you, because it you don't have to do anything. Um, so I'll go ahead and put my ring on there and she is good to go now that's all i need now i will write today's date i normally do it i just write it i take a piece of paper on it and i write today's date on it and i write the date of when i expect to this ferment to be done so on here uh oh i got one trying to creep up and like i said this is okay i don't mind it This one right here wants to creep up, so you got to go, buddy. Let me wipe that top off real quick. All right. Wipe that off so we get a nice seal. <clears throat> All right. All right, and that is it. That is, this is how you ferment um, peppers. That's that's general. That's it. Some recipes, like this recipe, calls for uh, two week. Is it a two week? Um, it doesn't say. Oh, ten days. This one calls for a ten day. I always go longer. Um, the shortest that I ferment is maybe two weeks. This ferment has been going for almost two months. So um, the more, the longer you ferment, the more of the com complex uh, flavors that you're going to get um, out of your ferment. So I'll go ahead and move this to the side. I don't need it. I will put a date on that later. Okay, so now we need. Let me get these out of the way. All right, so now we need to do the good part right there. All right, so like I say, I've been fermenting this one for about two months, and it is ready to go. Um, so the first thing I need to do is to strain this. So I will strain this over and into here. Uh. All right, and if you look at it, you see this uh, milky looking color in here. Perfectly fine. It's supposed to look like that. Um, so don't worry about that. It's got, oh, it smells good. Um, so now I'll just pour that in there. I got my, I got my weight. I got to get out of the way. All right. There we go. So now my ferment is in there. Put that stuff over in the sink. Woo -wee. I, I that smells good. Okay, so now I got my my peppers strained. The next thing is gonna be for me to 
put it up here in the in the mixer. All right, and I need to keep a quarter cup of this parmet uh, to add back into here. Um, so place the parmet. This is called the parmet right here. I have to get all that off of there. So place the ferment in there. Now that will have the the um, the garlic in there as well. So <clears throat> and then I need to put in the honey. Now it says a quarter of a cup. I don't really measure it. Um, I just kind of guesstimate on it, but you don't want to do too much. And I learned that from earlier, uh, earlier the first batch I did. I kind of overdid it with the honey, and um, you, you definitely don't want to overdo it because it makes it, it makes it. Um, I won't say chunky, but your it, it just feels off, you know, a little bit. So go with a quarter of a cup if possible. Um, and my vinegar, it says a quarter of a cup. So I'll go ahead and. And I'll do a little bit more than a quarter of a cup on my vinegar because I like the vinegar taste in it. So I'm going to go with, actually, I'm not going to use this much, but I'm going to do about half a cup. Yeah, I think that's about right right there. So that's about half a cup of vinegar. And it does call specifically for the apple cider vinegar for this recipe. Uh, let's see. And now I need to mix the, the brine in there. So I need, let me, uh, let me pour this over here. Let's see. All right. So we got that in there. And now it's time to blend it up. <clears throat> go ahead. And, and if I'm not, yeah, so I'll go ahead and. All right. So I had to uh, cut the video right there because that was kind of loud. But we got some fermented hot sauce right here. <laughs> Man. All right. That is ready. Let me get a little taste of it. Might need some water. Oh, that's hot. Ooh -wee. Man. It's got a nice, it's got a nice uh like it's got initial heat and then it's got that nice after flavor to it. So um uh, no, that's good. That's real good. <clears throat> I do need a little bit of water with that though. Good Lord. Now, I like to put this, I eat a lot of chicken and rice. Uh, don't don't overpower it though. Don't put too much on there because it'll it'll probably ruin your meal. But I put just enough on there to get that heat and that, that honey flavor in there. Yeah, buddy. I like that. Um, so now. I need to fill some jars. Oh, this ain't the right. This ain't the right one. Let me come back. This is the right one right here. There we go. So now, pour a little bit in here. Sorry, I'm concentrating over here. I ain't trying to spill nothing. <laughs> I done got quiet on y'all. <clears throat> now, something important about this step right here, if you do plan to do this, 
is that this ferment is technically still fermenting. Okay. Um, if you want to stop the ferment, then you need to heat this up on the stove. Okay. You need to put it on the stove. Go ahead and boil it up a little bit. And when you do that, you'll you'll be stopping the, the ferment. Okay. I can't remember exactly how long you're supposed to do it. I think maybe 10 minutes, but um, definitely look that up. The reason why I say that is because I'm going to seal this and, and the top could pop off, right? If you if it's still fermenting, it's building up pressure in there. But I don't want you to do that and not know that that's a possibility. Now, I've never had any issues with it. I got fermented hot sauce in my fridge right here. Oh, and I want to show you. I'm glad I picked that up. And this has been in there for months. And it's it's not. There's no issues with it. And I wanted to show you. I'm glad I pulled that out. I can show you this. You see there that it's separating right there? That's perfectly fine. You just shake that joker up, shake it up, and it's good to go. Okay. So um, just a little little tip that I learned is that the ferment is still fermenting. So we don't wanna we don't want this stuff exploding. So I wouldn't leave this out on the shelf. Putting it in the refrigerator does uh, slow down that, that ferment quite a bit, which is what I think prevents it from blowing this top. Uh, this ferment can be kept in the refrigerator for about a year. I don't think it'll last a year though, because it's <laughs> it's pretty doggone good. <clears throat> so I ended up getting three bottles out of this one and a little piece of that one. So on that one, I won't, uh, I won't use one of my seals, but I will seal up the three right here. And I'll show you how that's done. All right, so in order to do this, you're gonna need your, a little glue gun. I think there's other ways you can do it with a candle or something like that, but I like to use this glue gun because I got one. That kind of rhymed a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> but you just pull it down over top of it like that, and you turn it on, and then, you just kind of roll it around in front of it, see how it just goes ahead and now now you got yourself a sealed bottle there. You could use that for uh, Christmas gifts or just whatever if you're selling them. And I'll link all this stuff, uh, the bottles and these caps and whatnot. I'll link all that uh, in the show notes as they call them. <clears throat> yep. Real easy. Oh, I got that on video. Hold it down a little low. Oh, see, I got too close on that one. See that? So that one ain't gonna do. That'd be the first one that I that I uh, that I open up. All right, so that is it for the video. Um, pretty simple process. So you'll do that first part where you put everything in the jar. You set it aside to ferment. Once you've done fermenting, you strain you strain out your ferment. Put your ferment in, in first. Then you put in your honey and your apple cider vinegar. And then you re and then you add back some of the brine that you had in your ferment. Blend it up, and she's ready to go. Um, obviously, there's other recipes in that book. I'll show you that book again. And I will link this one below for sure in case you want to pick it up. And also for the salt, I'd like to use Bull, Bull's Bay Sea Salt. Um, Teresa over there is awesome. Um, I should say Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. I don't know, I'm sorry I messed that up, but um, she's awesome over there and I will link her below as well. Um, I like using these little pickle pipes. They work great, uh, easy, no no hassle. Um, also, you could use these this type. It's by Ball. Hope you can see that. But it just has a little flat, a little opening, a flat on the top right here, and it <laughs> works the same way. You just screw it on there, and you let your ferment go. You don't have to sit there and burp it. 
my first ones I, I was using just a regular you know the, the regular tops with the, the the ring and you have to burp it like every day you know and it's just it gets so so old especially when you have stuff that's available that makes it so much easier um, other than that I think that's it if you like the video please hit like subscribe to my channel and um, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.